Come on, let's give it up for Jesus. If you know he's holy and he's worthy, give him some praise today. Come on, it's Sunday morning. We're all gathered here for one name, and that's the name of Jesus. One more shout of praise to Jesus this morning. And can we give our brother a hand, Asante? What a powerful song that was. Thank you so much. We want to say welcome this morning. You made it in church today. We're so proud of you for being here. So many other places you could have been, but you're in the house of God. Before you're seated, before you're seated, I know you want to sit down. I know you're ready for the word, but we're going to pray right now. And I, I, I just want us to invite the presence of the Holy Spirit. He's here already, but I want us to be ready to receive a word from God this morning. We're going to teach out of the Bible. And we believe that there's no greater truth in the world than scripture. There's so many great opinions out there in the world, but it's the Bible that is going to bring life into our, into our situations. He's going to give us hope when we have no hope, peace when we have no peace. It's through the living word of God. How many are ready to receive the word today? <laughs> Bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, we thank you that today we're going to hear from you. God, we thank you. You have a word specifically for us, for me. Lord, and I pray, God, that the person that came in this room that's carrying that burden or that weight, Lord, speak right to their heart today. God, would you open up, Lord, our eyes to, hear, to see you and our ears to hear your voice. And God, those situations that seem like they're too big for us to handle, Lord, we just surrender them to you right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say amen. amen. Give your neighbor a high five as you take your seat and tell them I'm so glad to see you in church today. Awesome. Well, right now we got, it is like sports season. There's like, this is where all the sports seem to collide. And I, I you know, we we're just talking about God. All of a sudden I put your mind on sports, but there, there's a reason for it. Um, uh, any Dodger fans in the house right now? Any Dodger fans? Gloria a Dios. Thank you, Lord. Any Padres fans in the house? Uh, we'll pray for you. I know it's quiet. They're quiet now. They're quiet now. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Any Yankees fans in the house today? Yankees? Okay. Man, they're shouting loud. Any Jesus fans in the house today? Come on, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Look, you're in the house of God. There's no better place to be than in the house of the Lord. The Dodgers can't fight for your soul. The Yankees can't fight for your salvation. But Jesus came down to this earth, died on the cross so that you can be saved. He's the ultimate champion. Give Jesus one more shout of praise. He's worthy. All right, but there's a reason I brought up sports. In sports, no matter what sport you're talking about, there's always two sides of the game, whether that is, um, uh, whether that is uh, competitive sports, contact sports, even, even just any, any kind of battle, any spe uh, I'm sorry, a uh, 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 battle in war, anything, there's two sides. You must play offense and you must also play defense. And there's this saying, I hear this in basketball a lot, they say, it's defense that wins championships. Because you can have a great attacker, you can have great scorers in a game, but if you cannot defend, then you cannot win. And so why is this all so relevant? Because we're talking about spiritual warfare. <clears throat> and whether we like it or not, you are in a fight right now. And the fight that you're in, if we're going to get good at winning in spiritual warfare, we got to get good at playing both sides of the game, offense and defense. So sometimes we think that the whole spirit, our whole spiritual walk is just about being on the offensive, attack, attack, attack. But not just that, we also got to get good at defending, holding our ground, resisting the enemy when he tries to tempt you. Not falling for the traps or the schemes of the devil. How many know what I'm talking about? So we're going to learn about that today. We're going to talk about what spiritual warfare is. We're going to learn about who we're fighting against. And we're also going to learn, also going to learn how we can fight. Who's ready to receive today? 
Let's do it. First question we're gonna answer, what is spiritual warfare? Well, simply put, we are in an ongoing battle between God's kingdom and the enemies. There's a constant fight going on. No matter where you are in the spirit, you may not be able to see it with your natural eyes, but there's a war happening right now everywhere you go. And here's the other thing, whether you sign up or not, your life is directly impacted by this fight. You know, some of, some of you have served in the military. How many people served in the military here um, in the States? You served, just wave your hand at me, wave your hand at me really quick. Let's give them a round of applause. They put their life on the line for our country. Thank God for you guys. But they signed up or got drafted, I'm not sure, one of the two. They signed up, but in spiritual warfare, it doesn't work that way. We're all drafted in the fight. Whether you want to be engaged in the battle or not, there is no neutral ground. You're in the battle. And here, there's one or two places you can be. You can either be a soldier in God's army or you can become a prisoner of war. There's no middle ground. You either fight on the winning side or you get defeated along with the demon and Satan and all his minions. This battle takes place in the spiritual realm. It happens every day of our lives. It affects us, our families, our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions. Every day we're in a spiritual fight. And one of the greatest battles we have is realizing that we're all in this fight. What, the, the enemy's tactic is to get you to think that everything is just sunshine and daisies, that there's nothing going on, the devil wants you to think that he's, you know, that you're fine. He's not worried about you. He's not going to try to attack you. He's not going to try and throw darts at you. But when we think about it, we realize when we wake up, we realize that a lot of the things we go through are the result of spiritual warfare. And when, and when you win, it's because you're awake to the fact that you're in a fight. I've never seen anybody win a fight when they're asleep. If you watch UFC, if you're asleep, it's because you got knocked out. You lost. And you wake up and the guy, the, your opponent is holding the belt up like this. And you're like, where am I? That's what happens when we're asleep in the battle. The only way to win this fight is to realize we're in a battle right now. To accept it. But I got good news for you. The fight has already been won by Jesus Christ. And if you are with him, you're on the winning side. Give God some praise. It says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, our fight is not against people on earth, but against the rulers and authorities and powers of this world's darkness, against the spiritual powers of evil in the heavenly world. So spiritual warfare is not about physical enemies. I know you might think that your wife is your enemy or your husband is your enemy, but they are not your enemy. We're actually at war against spiritual enemies. I know you think your boss is your enemy or the person that cut you off um, in the parking lot just now when you, you, you were waiting for the spot, someone took it. They're not your enemy, okay? There's, I'm not saying there's a spirit behind what them taking your spot, but we're out fighting against spiritual fight. It, there's no, we're not fighting against a physical battle here. The reality is that we are, we are, we have been totally unaware about this warfare. But the Bible warns us in 1 Peter 5 8, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The devil is totally waiting for an opportunity for you to put your guard down so that he can attack. The devil is, is constantly looking and watching and waiting for us to become asleep at the wheel so that he can pounce on us, so, so that he can attack. And the enemy's waiting for that opportunity. This is why scripture warns us, be awake, be alert. You're in a fight right now. Don't pretend like the battle is not happening. Don't pretend like you clocked out of the war. No, it's happening. As long as we're on this earth, we're in a war. I know I'm like repeating the same point over and over and over, but sometimes we just need to wake up and hear the truth and realize we're in a fight. 
Someone say, I'm in a fight. We're in a fight right now. When we're aware of it, it helps us to stay alert so that we're not surprised by the fight. Um, anyone in here ever been sucker punched before? What a crazy question to ask in church. Look how many hands went up though, that was crazy. Maybe online, um, someone sucker punched you. I don't know, it just happened. And that seems like, what just happened? I just got, boom, I got sucker punched. I don't know where it came from. I don't know what direction. I just got hit. Let's always be ready so that the enemy can never sucker punch you. So that the enemy can never catch you slipping. The, The enemy can't catch you lacking. The enemy can never catch me, not on my toes. I want to make sure that wherever I go, whatever I do, I'm ready for the fight. I'm shielded up. I got my armor on. It don't matter what the devil throws my way. I'm ready for the fight. As a matter of fact, devil, I'm calling you out. That's the kind of fight we need to have. So this leads us to our next question. What is spiritual warfare? We know that. But who are we fighting against? Well, we answered that already. But just to define it a little better, we are fighting against Satan. Satan is the one we're fighting against. And it's not other religions. It's not a politician. It's not policy. It's not a a, a person. The, The real person that we are fighting against in this war is Satan. Let's call him exactly who he is. He's an accuser. He's a deceiver, he is a liar, he, will, he has no truth in him, and all he wants to do is steal, kill, and destroy. That's all he does. He has no good intention for you at all. Never feel sorry for the devil, because he doesn't feel sorry for you. The devil is willing to kick you while you're down. The devil will not um, give you any grace. There's no grace in the devil. Don't ever become friends with the devil. Don't think that he's, you're getting a little something from him and he's getting a little something from you and you guys are on good terms. There's no such thing about being on good terms with a liar. He's lying. You know, there's people, you know, we, 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 we hear about celebrities that sell their soul to the devil. You heard of that before? Well, that kind of stuff is real. These are people that are being deceived to believe that if they give the, enemy, they give the devil something, they sacrifice something to him, they, 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 they do some little uh, uh, santaria stuff or whatever that stuff is called, and, and, and they give the devil something that he'll give him some in return, and we're on good terms. This is all a deceptive lie to trap them to believe in, in a lie so that the enemy can have them as a prisoner of war. The end result for anybody that follows the devil is death and destruction. That's always the end result. Some people say this, like, oh, when I go to hell, I'm going to party with my friends. We're going to party in hell. Why would I want to go to heaven? It sounds boring. I'm going to party in hell. And the devil's like, yeah, 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 come. It's going to be a party. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. There is no party in hell. There is no life in hell. There is no, that hell is a place where it's the total absence of God's presence. There is no good in hell. There is no peace in hell. There is no comfort in hell. There is no company in hell. There's nothing. You're alone in pain and darkness and misery forever and ever. Why are we talking about this in church? Well, we're talking about real spiritual warfare here. And, and until we talk about these things, we don't realize that this is the reality of where we are. Did you know that you will exist longer after you die than you do on this earth? Your life here on this earth, whether you, you live 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years old, it doesn't matter. It is so short compared to where you're going to live after you die. Come on, we got to talk about these things. I know it's a little quiet but for a Sunday morning, but we're in spiritual warfare even on a Sunday morning. So we're fighting against Satan. And I read that scripture already, 1 Peter 5a, but it says, your adversary, the devil, he prowls like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. He's looking. And most of the time the enemy is looking for the person that's, that's pulled himself away from the army. I shared this with the young adults on Friday, but the devil isn't necessarily looking for the weakest person, but he's looking for the isolated person. The devil, see, when, when, you, when you study kind of how lions hunt, 
It's not necessarily they're looking for the weak one because sometimes the weak one is in the middle of the herd in the pack and they can't get to him because that means they got to get through everybody else that's surrounding them. But the lions, they're looking for the one that strays a little bit too far from the army. The one that kind of isolates themselves or pulls himself out of it. Maybe they're asleep when the army is moving. Maybe, maybe you stop marching with God in the marching orders that he gives us. Maybe we take a break from our spiritual walk. I don't know what it is, but the lions are looking for the person that will pull away from the army. Never pull away. Never pull back. God will never lead you away from the army. God will never lead you away from the church and away from the body. God will never lead you away from ministry. God will never lead you and isolate you and throw you away and uh, throw you out of this church. No, that, those are all tactics and schemes from the devil to get you to separate yourself so he can attack. Come on, we got we to expose the devil and his lying tactics and the things he tries to do to, to capture us. See, what does the devil do? His role is to deceive. His role is to accuse and his role is to lead believers away from God. One, one, I love this, and I've heard this before, one great way to know if it's God or if it's not. See, the devil will never lead you closer to God. That's a great way to know. Is this from God or is this not from God? And, and God will never push you away from him and his presence. He's always tugging at your heart. He's always leading you back to him, convicting our heart to bring us closer to him. So that's a great way to distinguish. Is it God or is it Satan? Well, here's how you know. Is it leading you closer to the Lord or is it pulling you further away from him? It's a great indication. But Satan is the one who's responsible for tempting Adam and Eve in the garden. Do you guys have you ever heard that story? Adam and Eve, they're in the garden. And the Lord says, you can eat from any, any tree, anything except that tree right there. And then a little serpent, a little lying serpent comes out, starts talking to Eve. Hey, Eve, um, you know, I know God said this, but uh, do you think he really meant that? Maybe this is what he kind of meant. There he goes, the enemy already trying to twist, deceive, and lie. And sometimes God speaks to you very clearly, and the enemy's job is just to twist it, deceive you, and lie to you. To make you think, did I really hear from God? Did God really call me here? Does God really have a plan for your life? No, maybe, maybe he used to have a plan, but you messed up a little too much. Now he doesn't have a plan for you anymore. Or maybe, maybe God had, had a future for you, but oh man, you just, you blew it. You blew it. So now God doesn't have a future for you anymore. So the only way to cope is just to take the bottle back. Pick the bottle back up. To get high again. Go back to the world. The enemy twists, he, he deceives, he lies. So Satan tempted Adam and Eve in the garden and they fell to temptation. Satan, fast forward, he also tempted Jesus. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and then he went and Satan met him right in that moment and he tried to tempt Jesus. Adam and Eve, they fell. But Jesus, he won. And he conquered. He overcame all of temptation so that you and I can overcome temptation as well. So Satan tried to conquer Jesus, but Jesus conquered him. He made the devil look dumb. But to this day, Satan continues to try and tempt us and deceive us from believing in his lies. That's who we're fighting against. Who else are we fighting against? I'll say this, demons. We're fighting spirits. Are demons real? They're real. Right now we, we are, and this is what we gotta be careful with. And maybe, you know, your whole life, you growing up, I remember I used to celebrate Halloween and we used to, we used to just decorate our house. We couldn't wait to put the spider webs up and to put the skeletons all over and the, and the scary bloody masks. We're just like, it was so fun. And I look back and I think, man, I was really playing with fire. And I'm just going to say this. Maybe, maybe your house is decorated right now. I don't know. I'm not calling you out. I'm not, I'm not going to come to your house, okay? I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is this. Sometimes the devil, he tries to glamorize. 
He tries to glamorize and romanticize. Oh, a spooky little skeleton and a spooky little demon and a, a, little, a little horror movie, 30 days of horror films. That won't hurt nobody. Or just, you know, put, uh, pay, uh, putting blood all over my house and, 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 and we're doing all these things. And he likes to make himself look like an like, instant little angel. I'll never touch you. It's just a cute decoration. But the reality is all of those things, although it may be plastic, you probably bought them at Home Depot. I don't know where you got this stuff from. Although it's probably just some plastic, the reality is they represent something that's real. There's demons that these things, they actually represent. Now, I'm not saying every little thing has a demon in it. Oh, there's a demon in this water. There's a demon in that. I'm not saying that. But I, what I am saying is this, there, the reality is there are real demons that really do desire to conquer you and your future. Demons have an, an assigned agenda from Satan to attack you, to influence you, to oppress you. And this is why it seems like, man, you used to be so full of joy, now you're overwhelmed with depression. That's a demon. Or, or, man, I just, uh, I cannot seem to be set free from this bondage. Well, because sometimes those are demonic ties that the enemy tries to influence you with when we open the door to him. Okay, now, now I know this is deep for a Sunday morning, but we're talking spiritual warfare. Remember, we are in a fight. We got to talk about it. We're in a fight. So these demons, uh, the Bible says this in Ephesians 6, 12. And this is just another version of a scripture I read, but it says, our fight is not against people on earth, but against the rulers, authorities, and powers of this world's darkness, against the spiritual powers of evil in the heavenly world. This is talking about demons, spirits that we're at war against. And these forces, they seek to, these spirits to, to bring chaos, to bring fear, doubt, division, oppression, anxiety, lies of the enemy, hate, anger. These are, this is what they do. And they, they're all assigned to do these things. And they leave us trapped in, the, in these things. But thank God, thank God there was one who defeated every spirit, every demon, every offense, every single bondage, all spiritual darkness. His name, church, is Jesus Christ. And the Bible says he is the name that is above every name. Jesus is above depression. Jesus is above anxiety. Jesus is above hate and murder. Jesus is above lust. Jesus is above confusion. He's above all of these spirits that are trying to conquer you. It doesn't matter how bound you feel like you are right now. Jesus defeated those demons when he died on the cross for you and me. Come on, give Jesus some praise. He's a champion. He's a champion. We're still answering this question, who are we fighting against? I think it's important to highlight we're not fighting against people. Again, going back to that scripture, Ephesians 6.12, it says our fight is not against people on earth. I know we think there's a person that's your enemy. Or there's a person. And right now, I, and I know we're, we're in, in, and it's like a crazy season. There's controversial politics left and right. But people are not your enemy. They're spirits. See, and we, one thing we have to remember too is this. Before we are, and we got, you know, we're, we're, we're proud about where we're from. Maybe you're proud about your country, proud about your, your, where you, your family comes from, all these things. But above all of these places we're from and our affiliations, we got to remember we are a part of a higher kingdom. We are citizens of heaven. We belong to the Lord. And so we got to remember we're not fighting against each other. Right now, the world, the enemy wants us all to be divided, beating each other up, uh, um, saying this about each other, this about that side, this about the other side. Well, open your eyes and realize, man, sometimes the enemy traps us too to try and fight each other in the church. We're not against each other. We're all on the same team. I'll say this too. You know the churches that are preaching the Bible, that are preaching the gospel all over this world, maybe down the street or in the other city over? We're not against them. We're on the same team as them. We're not fighting against people. We're fighting against spirits. 
So remember that if it seems like people are coming against you, it's probably the enemy trying to cause you to be full of division and hate. But don't take the enemy's bait and surrender your life to Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right, the last question I'm going to answer is this. How do we fight? We answered what is spiritual warfare? We answered who is it against? But I want to answer this question, how do we fight? First thing we got to do, before you can be engaged in the fight and actually win, you have to give your life to the champion. His name is Jesus. John 16, says, I have told you these things, Jesus is saying, so that you can have peace because of me. In this world, you will have trouble, but be encouraged. I have won the battle over the world. There's only one person Only one person in this world that can say, I've conquered every temptation, I have never fallen, I have defeated the world, and his name is Jesus. But here's what's so great about Jesus, is that he didn't just do it for himself, he did it for you and me. So now we can say, I have overcome the world. I am more than a conqueror. I I am the head and not the tail. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Because he lives in you, you are now a champion. Someone say, I'm a champion. So now, see, this matters a lot. What matters is who your commander is. Who's your commander? Come come on, you guys are ready. Well, the the real question is, all right, let's give Jesus some praise. We're just too excited here. The question is this. The question is this. Who, Who is calling the shots in your life? Who's calling the shots? I'm not asking you to answer, but praise the Lord. You guys are ready. I want you to think about it, though, because a good indication to to see who's calling the shots in your life is to see what are the results in this life you're getting. Are you seeing yourself represent, are you seeing the, the good things of God more in your life than you are seeing the destruction of the enemy? Because you can see both. It happens. And in scripture, it gives us clear indications. Am I becoming more sinful, more prideful, more lustful, more angry, more worried, more more consumed by the world? If those things are happening, it's probably because we've let the enemy call the shots in our life. But if I see myself becoming more of an overcomer, more full of God's peace, more full of his love, uh, here's another good one, more patience for people. Ooh. Stepping on toes now. You know what I'm talking about? All of a sudden, you used to just cuss people out, but now you're just a little more patient with them. You're like, don't worry about it. And you're like, did I just say that? Well, you are real, Lord. I'm just kidding. It could happen. But this is what happens. It's a good indication of who's calling the shots. But it's very important who the commander is in your life. Who have you given permission to, to lead you and to guide you and to walk you through it? Now, here's, here's something great. When Jesus wins, you win. When he's your commander, you win. Everything that Jesus has won, the victory and all the good things that he's won on your behalf, they belong to you when you belong to Jesus. All of his blessing, all of his peace, all of his goodness, his salvation, forgiveness of sin, it belongs to you when you give your life to Jesus. Come on, that's some good news. I didn't deserve it, but he gave it to me. Here's another great way. How do we fight? I talked about this earlier by playing offense and playing defense. We got a, a, a sword and a shield really quick. I'm going to bring this out. And we, we're not going to highlight all of the spiritual armor, but I do want to rep- I do want to show. Thank you, Brene. Let's give it up for our media team. They're awesome. I do want to show a little bit about what it looks like. There's armor. This is this is called the shield. And this shield, we all know what it's for. It's for blocking. It's for shielding against darts. It's for protecting against things that might come your way. Maybe the devil will try to attack you with something. He'll try to strike you with the word. I got a shield to protect me. Maybe he might try to uh, attack you maybe with some bad news. You got a bad news from the doctor. Well, I'm not going to receive that and become depressed and scared. I'm going to use a shield and remember who my protector, my healer is. 
Here's another big one. Maybe the enemy would try to conquer you with a fence. Somebody offended you or said something bad to you or they try to hurt you. Well, it doesn't matter. I got a shield. I'm not going to let that get to me. I'm going to block it. That's called defense. You know, so we got to play defense. The Bible says in Ephesians 6.11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. The devil, he has schemes. He has these tactics, these plans. He's trying to get you caught up. Anyone ever been caught up before? That was the devil's fault. The greatest defense you can have, the greatest shield you can have is this. Not putting your faith in your own works, not putting your faith in how strong you are, not putting your faith that you could handle it, you could do it yourself. The greatest shield you can have is putting your faith in Jesus Christ, is being covered by the blood of Jesus. I can't, don't put your faith in your own good works because your own good works, they, they, they run out sometimes and, and, and you don't get it right all the time. We fail, we stumble sometimes. But the faith we can have is in our Lord Jesus Christ, who's never fallen, who's never been defeated, who has won every battle. That's our shield. So we gotta play defense. What are some things we gotta defend against? Well, okay, of course, defend against attacks. But here's another one that, that we gotta talk about. Become unoffendable. Become unoffendable. You can't offend me. Oh, oh, did you hear so-and-so, they talk about you behind their back. They said this. Yeah, I heard them. It was crazy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can't offend me. That's right. Oh, man, this person, man, they just, uh, they, man, you're going to let them punk you like that? Hey, praise the Lord. Can't offend me. I know what's going on here. I'm not against that person. I realize what's going on here. I'm not against that. I'm not against this person here. There's a spirit right now. This is a scheme of the enemy. See, offense is like a landmine. And when you're in the middle of war, you gotta be very careful. You gotta be wise about where you step. You gotta be very careful about where you go. Because if you're not paying attention, if you're asleep at the wheel, you could step on a landmine and it could explode in your face. But when you're unoffendable, it's like, I'm, I've got a shield on. I'm playing defense. I'm not gonna let the enemy offend me out of church. Offend me out of my purpose. Offend me out of my ministry. Offend me out of my destiny. They could lie about me. They could call me names. They could spit in my face. They could persecute me. I could even die for the gospel. But I will never let the enemy get me caught up in some offense. I will continue to love God and love people. I got defense. Some will say defense. 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 We got to play defense. We got to stand our ground against the enemy. But not just that, we also got to play offense. Someone say offense. I got the sword now. I got the sword now. There's a scripture in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 7. It says, we use these weapons of righteousness in the right hand, oh, sorry, I got these backwards, in the right hand for attack and in the left hand for defense. We use these things. And when we're in the fight, you can't just play defense the whole time. You'll never score. As much as you want, as much as you try to defend, 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 until you pick this sword up, you won't win a battle. You gotta grab this sword and realize that this sword is the weapon that God has given you to cancel and to bind every single spirit, every demon, everything that comes your way. If it tries to come against your family, I got a sword for that too. If it tries to come against me, I got a sword for that. If the devil tries to conquer my future, I got a sword for all of that. He's not gonna take my family, my city, my country. I got a sword for all of that. Come on, someone's got to pick their sword up today and learn to get in the fight. Get in the fight. Someone say, get in the fight. You know what this sword is? It's the word of God. It's the word. The Bible says, Ephesians 6, 17, I keep going back to the scripture, but it says, take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You know, you can't just grab it and then expect to only use it when it's uh, battle time. 
I heard this crazy stat, we shared it here before, but <clears throat> the average like champion UFC fighter, they get something crazy, like they spend an average of like less than eight minutes in the ring in their entire career. It's like on average, they spend less than eight minutes actually in the fight, but they spend years of their lifetime preparing for that fight. And it's the same with us. You may, those, those spiritual, those, those high intense battles that you're in, they may feel like a day or week or two, but just know this, you're gonna win those fights based on how prepared you are to use this sword. If I don't know how to swing it, you're not gonna know, you're not gonna figure it out in the heat of the battle. This is why when, when it comes to learning the sword and learning the word, you gotta be, your word life has to be so strong that when the devil comes talking to you, you know how to swing this thing. Bang, 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 bang. See, look at me, I can't even swing. This thing is like, weighs more than me, man. What is going on? This thing is heavy. We gotta learn how to use this. Your preparation for the fight will determine your victory. How prepared are you in the battle? Are you, are you just gonna pick up this sword when it's battle time? Or are you gonna go out there and practice? Are you gonna get in your word in the morning? Are you gonna spend time with the Lord and memorize scripture like Henry on the screen that was memorizing scripture? He couldn't even read, now he's memorizing scripture and he's gonna teach in a DG pretty soon. But he's learning, he's learning how to use this. He's learning how to cut the enemy. He's learning how to take the, the legs of the devil out from underneath him. This is how we use it. Some say, this is how I fight my battles. Speaking of fighting our battles, can the worship team come out actually? Let's bring the worship team out. Another way to fight is through praise and worship. It's through praise and worship. Here's another way to fight. It says this. It says in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21, it says, after consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. This is how I fight my battles. <clears throat> this is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. They gave thanks to God before the fight was even over. They're marching towards the enemy, singing, praising, worshiping. And with their voice, they began to overcome the devil and all of his schemes. How scary would it be if you're facing somebody? I mean, how scary is it for the devil when he sees you singing about your victory before you even met on the battlefield? How, that, uh, that's intimidating. We got the victory, we already won. The devil's like, we haven't even fought yet. But you know the fight is fixed. You know that there, you know that when it comes between the devil and Satan, Satan has no chance against Jesus. The scripture goes on to say this. It says this, verse 22. At the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. The enemy was fighting it them himself. So when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, they all, they saw, all they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. Talk about total annihilation. Because you learn how to fight in the battle. You learn how to sing to your victory. I know you think, maybe you thought singing is a little cheesy, singing is a little corny, but I, I got something to tell you. That's a spiritual weapon. And in the spirit, those that are, and I'm just, and you don't have the best voice, who cares? But in your spirit, you know, I'm singing out because I got victory. I'm praising God because I won the fight. This is how I fight my battles. Let's sing that out. I want us to get ready right now. I want you to stand on your feet. And I don't know what fight you're going through right now. I don't know what battle you're in in the moment, but I got good news for you. I want you right now to lift your hands to heaven. I want you to take your, take your, this is gonna be our weapon right now. And we're gonna right now worship God through your storm, through your circumstance, through the fight, through the middle of the battle right now. This is your moment to conquer the enemy. And we're gonna sing right now. Let's lift it up and worship. 
Let's give God our praise. This is how I fight my battles. Come on, this is how this we fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how we fight. Oh. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Come on, let's get it. Let's sing it. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. Come on, this is how we fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Some of you right now, you're winning the fight. fight right now in this battles. moment. Overcoming. This is, how I, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Come on, this is how we fight. This is how I fight my battles. We're winning right now the battle this against oppression, against fear, against anxiety, this against is how pain. I fight against my Come on, sing it out. I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Come on, sing it out. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Father, right now, right now, we surrender this war, we give it to you, God. Too many times we're resisting the wrong person. We resist your voice. But I pray, God, in this moment, in this moment, Father, that we would not resist you any longer. But Father, I pray right now, we would surrender completely our hearts to you. I wanna ask you this question right now. Maybe you feel like you're on the losing side of the battle and you feel like you've been getting, the, the person that's been calling your shots has been Satan. The good news is that Jesus doesn't need you to prove yourself to him before you can join his army. He's proven himself. And actually he's looked for those that are lost, that can't help themselves, that can admit, I need a savior. And if today you're saying, I need a savior, it's time for me to switch sides. I'm ready to join God's army. I'm ready to surrender my life to him. I wanna give him my heart. I'm ready to give him my life. I wanna be forgiven of my sins. I wanna know if I were to die today, I end up in heaven, not in hell. Not because of the good things I've done, but because of how good he's been to me. If you're ready to put your faith in Jesus Christ, then at the count of three, I want you to raise your hand all over this place. You can put your hands down for now. But when I count to three, those that are saying, I wanna receive Jesus Christ, raise your hand. One two, three, raise your hands, raise your hands, raise your hands quickly, I see your hands, I'm proud of you guys, I see you, I see you guys, I'm proud of you, I see you over there, I'm proud of you, I see you, anybody else, can you do me one more favor, could you make your way out of your seat, we got a team that wants to pray with you, come up to the front, quickly, quickly, and this is a declaration today that you are joining the, the Lord's army, that you're receiving his goodness and his forgiveness and his grace. Come on, let's give them a round of applause as they make their way forward today. This is how I fight my battles. Yes. This is how I fight my battles. This is how Come on, they're still coming up. Let's still clap. They're still coming up, church. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is awesome. This is great. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. Awesome. So for everybody that came forward right now, just look at me really quick. We have a, we have a class for you. It's called Holy Warriors. And this class is starting um, just very soon. In nine days. It's starting in nine days. So this class is designed to help you grow in your walk with God. So we're, we're not just gonna help you get saved and then we're just gonna leave you hanging. Real quick, hang on one second. The, the goal is that we help you get baptized, help you grow in your walk with God. And, and when you feel like you don't know how to fight, this is what these classes are for, to teach you how to use that sword, teach you how to use the shield, and to grow in your walk with God. So the person in front of you, they're gonna pray with you and they're gonna get you signed up for this class. It's called Holy Warriors. We start very, very soon. And this class is designed to help you. That's, that's who it's for, designed for you. You ready? Ready to go? Let's do this. Aren't we so excited for everybody up here? Let's bow our heads today.
And, and repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord, forgive me. I admit that I've sinned against you. But from this moment forward, I'm ready to give it all up. I give you my sin. I give you my chains. I give you the bondage that I've been in. And I ask you, Lord, that you would set me free from any spirits that have been overwhelming me. Thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross and you rose from the dead so that I can be free and saved. I receive your free gift of salvation. Fill me with your spirit. Make me a new creation. And then thank you, Lord, that I am more, that I am more than a conqueror. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise today. I want to I wanna pray for you as we dismiss. I want to pray for you before you go. Before you go, I want to pray for you. Oh, I remember next Sunday, Ray Kirkland's going to be here. It's a service you don't want to miss. Lift your hands right now. Father, I pray for everybody here. I pray a blessing, God, Lord, that they would go and win these fights that they're in, that they would no longer be bound, Father, by the enemy's tactics or schemes, but, Lord, they'd be ready to fight, ready to use the word, ready to pray, and ready to worship in, these mid in the middle of the fight, God. We thank you that you've equipped us today with your word. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say amen. We love you, church. Be blessed. Have a great Sunday. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.